हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द वी टेक्नोलॉजी इन दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग द सीवीडी एंड द डायलैक्ट्रिक थिन फिल्म्स एंड टुडे आर टॉपिक ऑफ द डे इज द हाई डेंसिटी प्लाज्मा केमिकल वेपर डेपोजिशन इन द प्रीवियस टू वीडियोज वी हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन एंड द वेरियस प्रोसेस इन द डायलैक्ट्रिक सी प्रोसेसिस I hope you all have watched the previous two videos, and if you have still not watched them, it is highly recommended that you go back and watch at least these two videos in detail, and then come to this video. So today, as I have already told you, we are going to talk about the high density plasma chemical vapor deposition, which is HDP CVD. In detail, so let's analyze the high density plasma CVD process. First of all, there is this question in your mind that why we are discussing high density plasma chemical vapor deposition? What is the need of it? We have already talked about a lot of processes. We have already talked about the advantages and the disadvantages of a lot of CVD processes. So now, what is the need of high density plasma CVD? so we have talked about the dielectric etch back process in which we have uh, seen that the deposition etching and the deposition cycles are done for the gap filling and for the gap filling we require two chambers two separate chambers are required here so this is the disadvantage over here i am requiring two chambers and if i have the narrower gaps i would be needing more and more deposition and etching cycles to fill these gaps so this is also a disadvantage so a tool can deposit and sputtering at simultaneously would be greatly helpful so if i am doing the deposition as well as the sputtering etching at the same time okay we don't need to have the separate cycles in the same cycle i am doing the deposition as well as etching so this tool is going to give me various advantages over the dielectric etch back process right so we are not uh, getting the separate cycles over here in the same cycle we are getting the uh, deposition as well as etching simultaneously so the solution is the high density plasma chemical vapor deposition with the help of which i can simultaneously deposit and do the sputtering etch so this is a very big advantage of using the high density plasma chemical vapor deposition now the question arises with the feature size shrinking metal line width and the gap between the metal line becoming smaller so width is becoming smaller gap is becoming smaller but the height is not reducing height of the metal line doesn't shrink accordingly which causes the larger gap aspect ratio why doesn't we are shrinking the metal line height accordingly to keep the same aspect ratio and it would be easier for the dielectric gap fill as well we are not reducing height in comparison to the width and the gap fill so what is the reason the reason is the resistance we know the resistance is given by the formula theta l theta is the resistivity rho l upon omega h if i am using rho as theta so it would be theta l upon w h right so if i am reducing h also if i am reducing l and w in the same manner so this is not not going to change the resistance but with the l and w if i am going to reduce h as well so h is in the denominator if h is reduced r is going to increase so resistance will be increasing accordingly in the accordance of the reduction of h therefore we can not reduce the height so line has to keep the same height so it would be causing more and more gaps so this we need to fill with the help of high density plasma chemical vapor deposition process simultaneous etching as well as uh, deposition processes would be required so now this is the chamber which is called the icp chamber inductively coupled plasma chamber so here we have the inductive coils present here so inductive coils are supplied with the power from source rf okay here we have the ceramic cover over here and the wafer is placed over the electronic chunk and here i am sending the bias uh, rf from the back side of the chunk and i am supplying heat 
helium from the back side. This is the chamber body in the uh, dark black color and now here I have filled this chamber with the plasma. Okay, so with the help of this inductive coils in the plasma over here, I am going to generate the high density plasma. I have already talked about the high density plasma when I was talking about the plasma in detail. So now high density plasma is going to give me high density plasma chemical vapor deposition. So this is how my ECR chamber would be looking like. Okay, so we had talked about the two types of chambers in the in the high density plasma first was icp and second is ecr ecr is the most commonly used chamber that we have here we are using the microwave and the magnets over here this is the plasma like the way we had the plasma in the icp chamber also so these are the magnetic field lines e chunk and the helium is sended from the back side and the bias rf so this is the wafer that is placed here and we are going to do the high density plasma chemical vapor deposition in the same chamber. So what are the applications? So you can see we are uh, using the high density plasma chemical vapor deposition to fill the gaps right okay in the simultaneous deposition and the etching processes so it ha it is having the imd application so you can see we have the deposition here first of all i am going to deposit any dielectric substance so the dielectric substance is deposited in the high density plasma like this and after that we again have the same deposition cycle right and after that we have again the deposition cycle right and after that we we are having the plasma enhanced eos deposition so this is my pet eos layer right so after that we are going to do the planarization with the chemical metallical polishing we are going to talk about the cmp in detail in some upcoming videos so now coming to the high density plasma cvd processes so we have different type of processes for different type of applications for usg we have uh, the various source gases like silane o2 and argon is going to give me undoped silicate glass with some uh, byproducts like H2O argons as well. So now after that we have fluorosilicate glass formation from the uh, silane SiH4, SiF4 plus O2 plus argon. Right, so here I am using one more compound that is SiF4 in addition to SiH4, O2 and argon which were used in the undoped silicate glass formation. So here I am going to get the fluorosilicate glass and some volatiles. It is used also for the PMD application. So here I am go going to get the PSG and here I am getting, I am having the source gases as SiH4 plus PH3 plus O2 plus argon. Here the phosphine is the additional compound which is used here and I am going to get the phosphosilicate glass and the volatiles. So the question arises that why is silane instead of TEOS is used as the silicon source gas when I am using the high density plasma chemical vapor deposition oxide process. I am not using the TEOS here, I am using silane here. What is the reason? So here uh, we don't require the process of step coverage anymore. Step coverage is not affecting this process much and why we were using TEOS? TEOS was used because it was giving me good step coverage and good uniformity that is not a defining factor for this process when I am using the high density plasma chemical vapor deposition. So for high density plasma CVD processes step coverage is no longer an important factor for the gap fill. Okay, we are having heavy ion bombardment which always keeps the gap tapered and the deposition is always bottom up. So we can uh, use silane and save the cost because TEOS is costlier. So we can use silane which is cheaper as compared to the TEOS and we can reduce overall cost and hassles related to the vapor delivery system of liquid TEOS as well. So TEOS is in liquid condition and there are some hassles in dealing with the vapors of the liquid TUS. So now whenever I am using the HDP CVD, there is this important process of dielectric CVD chamber cleaning. So we are going to discuss about the CVD chamber cleaning process in detail. So during dielectric CVD process, dielectric thin film will be deposited on everything inside the chamber like the walls, like
like the chunk everywhere we are having the deposition of the dielectric it does not know that where is the uh, chip and it is not going to just deposit on the chip it is going to deposit on the walls and the chunk as well so we need to have the routine cleaning of the chamber to prevent the particulate contamination problem otherwise we are getting the particulate contamination problems from the wall the deposition can uh, the deposit particles can come on the wafer and they are going to contaminate the next cycle of the deposition. So for uh, dielectric CVD more time for cleaning is uh, spent than the deposition. This is a very contradictory statement. So yes it is required the cleaning process is a very essential process in the HDP CVD process and we are spending more time for the cleaning than the deposition. RF plasma clean and the remote plasma clean is done. So first of all I am going to talk about the RF plasma clean. So the RF plasma clean process remove dielectric film on the process kits as well as from the chamber walls and here I am using the fluorocarbons. What are fluorocarbons? Fluorocarbons are the compounds like CF4 or C2F6 or C3F8. So here I am having some carbons which are associated with the fluorine CF4, C2F6 and C3F8. In some cases we can use NF3 also right so in plasma fluorocarbons are going to dissociate even though fluorine is having high affinity towards the carbon but in the presence of plasma it is going to get the high energy and it is going to dissociate free, free fluorine uh, will be generated fluorine radical is generated which removes silicon oxide as well as silicon nitride so this is called the RF plasma clean and let's discuss how free fluorine is going to dissociate the oxide as well as nitride. First of all, in the presence of plasma, CF4 or C2F6 or C3F8 is going to dissociate and going to form the fluorine radical. So it is going to dissociate in CF3 and the fluorine radical. So here fluorine radical is generated which is going to react with the oxide as well as nitride. So when fluorine is reacted with the SiO2, it is going to form the SiF4 plus oxygen radical. Okay, so it is when reacted with the nitride Si3 and 4, it is uh, going to form SiF4 plus the nitrogen radical. So this is how we are going to clean with the help of fluorine and this is called the RF cleaning. Okay, so uh, let's discuss about the RF clean chemistry. In the plasma clean process, oxygen source gases such as N2O and O2 are used with the fluorocarbons to react with the carbon and free more fluorine radicals because what we require here, we require only the free fluorine radical. If I have more free fluorine radicals, the cleaning process would be faster. So I can use the oxygen source gases such as nitrous oxide on the oxygen gases with the fluorocarbons to generate more and more fluorine radicals to make this process faster. Okay, as I told you, this cleaning process is taking more time than the deposition process. So we are talking about increasing the speed of this cleaning process. So if I'm going to increase the fluorine to the carbon ratio, let's uh, take it greater than two, then it can clean efficiently. If I'm going to prevent carbon fluoride polymerization and it is going to again increase the cleaning efficiency. So polymerization should not be done. We, if we are getting more and more free fluorine radical, if I am getting polymerization, fluorine radical is consumed. If I am uh, reacting it, if I am uh, oxidizing it, I am getting more fluorine radical, which means I am getting faster cleaning process. Okay. So now you can see CF2 and its reconnections. So this is my uh, CF2. This is my CF2. These are the two vacant positions for, uh, for the carbon and here these are the two vacant position for the carbons. Okay, so you can see we have different vacant position if I have different types of CF2. Okay, so you can see this is the polymerization. So if I am going to get the polymerization, this is called the Teflon deposition. This is how all of the CF2 are going to combine and this is the polymerization. This is the process which is consuming the free fluorine molecules and in this uh, process the 
cleaning speed is going to reduce the cleaning time is going to increase so how we are going to get the end point we are not going to get the optical end point so excitation and relaxation causes glow different gases have different colors of the light and uh, you can see we have already seen different types of reactions over here and uh, different types of reactions are going to give me different colors of the light or different colors of the glow so information of the chemical component in the plasma is going to get from the from the light or the glow we, we can control or monitor the emission to control the clean process as well so we can see where i am going to get the different glow and we can get the uh, particular uh, monitoring of the particular process so okay so this is how we can monitor the cleaning process you can see the cleaning time in the seconds and you can see the fluorine peak so as i am going to increase the fluorine peak the cleaning time is increasing so you can see if i have the fluorine peak intensity at uh, 20 so cleaning time is less so fluorine peak intensity is increased cleaning time is increased after that the fluorine peak intensity is not going to affect the cleaning time and then it is called the end point okay so if i am using the remote plasma cleaning so rf plasma cleaning is using the ion bombardment and ion bombardment is going to cause the dam damage on the chamber parts as well what it's ion bombardment we know we are having high energy ions high energy ions are going to uh, reach and they are going to hit the walls of the chamber and this is how they are going to remove all of the depositants that i have deposited on the walls of the chamber so high speed ions are used here momentum transfer is used here which is going to cause the damage of the chamber parts so now remote plasma cleaning is done where we don't have any ion bombardment it is more gentle on the chamber parts because if i don't have any ion bombardment then the moment trans momentum transfer will not be there which means the damage of the chamber parts would not be there so it is more gentle on the chamber part and here i will be having the longer part lifetime and also we have the lesser greenhouse gas emissions so this is how our uh, remote plasma cleaning would be looking like the plasma is at a remote location this is how i have placed the plasma i have already talked about it also so when i was discussing about plasma so here i am sending the nf3 in the microwave so nf3 is going to give me n2 and the fluorine so this is how fluorine is coming here and here i have the heated plate it is going to etch out the uh, the, the oxide as well as nitride from the walls and the other parts of this uh, chamber okay and this is how from the pump i am getting all of the residuent gases so n2 sif4 and o2 are going to remove away from this pump so what is remote plasma clean remote plasma clean is used with the microwave power okay here uh, i have already told you how the structure of the chamber is looking like here i am using nf3 as a fluorine source gas nf3 is going to dissociate in the presence of plasma to form the fluorine and n2 so 99% of nf3 is dissociated in the microwave plasma and uh, now it is going to give me the fluorine and n2 you can see in the microwave plasma when nf3 is coming it is going to give me fluorine and n2 okay so free, free fluorine uh, reacts with the film in the chamber and no plasma inside the process chamber would be there okay you can see the process chamber over here here we don't have any plasma we have the free fluorine over here which is coming from a remote plasma location but inside the process chamber we don't have any plasma which means we don't have any ion bombardment which means it is going to prolong the lifetime now coming to the disadvantage of using the remote plasma cleaning it is having less maturity it is having higher cost and it is using nf3 cannot use the optical endpoint system that like the way i told you in the previous case we can use the optical endpoint system 
but it may need FTIR system to achieve the automatic process endpoint. Okay, so I hope you understood about the high density plasma chemical vapor deposition process in detail. If you want to study about this topic in a further detail, you can refer these books. These are really amazing books for your reference. I hope you like this session. If you have any further doubt, you can put the doubt in the comment and I am going to reply to you and resolve your doubt as soon as possible. If you like it, please push the like button, subscribe to the channel and also do share it with your friends. Thank you so much.